So in 3.4, we're talking about the fundamental theorem of algebra, and I'll use just kind of FTA throughout because it's less cumbersome than fundamental theorem of algebra. Um, but it's a really important part of algebra because it's what actually sets up our ability to solve polynomial equations and to factor polynomials um, and expand that knowledge of factoring and solving out beyond just the real numbers because, well, the fundamental theorem of algebra says this. Um, a polynomial f of x with real coefficients has at least one zero. Now, it doesn't necessarily say that has to be a real number, right? In fact, that could be a real or a complex number, and after all, we know that real numbers are actually a subset of the complex numbers. Uh, so my math symbol notation, I guess, could be to say that there exists at least one complex number, and we'll call it w, just to be consistent with the book, such that f of w is 0. At least one of them. This is all great, but it's not necessarily useful yet. Well, I mean, I guess it is, but what's more useful is this lemma that we have here. And a lemma is really just a kind of a mini proof or a mini theorem that follows as a result of a bigger theorem. So my lemma from the FTA um, is that every polynomial with real coefficients and degree n can be written as the product of n factors. So I have as many factors as I have degree. In other words, I can take kind of my generic or any polynomial, and I've shown you this notation before, I believe, uh, all the way down, whoops, all the way down to my linear term and my constant. And of course, we remember that all of my coefficients are real numbers and the leading coefficient can't be zero. Well, I just said I could write that as the product of as many factors as I have degrees. So I can write that as n factors, and we're going to use, we'll stick with our w um, from the official fundamental theorem of algebra. So we'll say x minus w1, x minus w2, and so on, all the way to x minus wn. And just as before, all of my w's need to be complex numbers, just like we said um, above. So this is what really gives us the green light to factor polynomials and to factor um, polynomials that maybe some of their roots aren't real numbers. And this is what lets us do that. One of the things that's going to make this even easier for us is the rational zero test. And it says, I'm actually going to move this out of the way because I need to um, add something here f of x is a polynomial with integer coefficients, but I also need to tell you that it has to have a non-zero constant also. So the constant cannot be zero. Then every possible rational zero of the function can be written in the form p divided by q. And p is a factor of the constant term. and q is a factor of the leading coefficient. If we stick with our generic notation above, p is a factor of a0, and q is a factor of a sub n. We can use this to help us kind of focus our work and, st and, um, and pinpoint maybe where we should begin looking for factors instead of just blindly plugging in numbers and seeing what sticks. So here's an example. We're going to express this polynomial as a product of linear factors. Well, the first thing we usually want to jump to is our rational zero test, except I don't have a non-zero constant. I don't have a constant. It's zero. Well, I can turn this into something that does have a non-zero constant by factoring out an x. So let me begin by doing that. And now I'm going to do the rational zero test exclusively off of this piece here. So I'm just going to stick with my inside part, the part that has a non-zero constant. So if I apply my rational zero test, we want to start by looking at factors of the constant and factors of the leading coefficient. Well, the factors of the constant, well, factors of 24. So that would be 1 and 24, um, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 6 and 4. 
I think they got them all. Actually, I should change this to say it's going to be plus or minus PQ. That's going to be important. So it would be plus or minus P over Q. Because I can have negative roots too. So plus or minus any combination of P divided by Q. Plus or minus 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 3 over 1, and so on. Well, we should keep this as easy on us as possible. So I think the logical place to start would be to try positive 1 first. And then if that doesn't work, we'll try negative 1. So we'll try 1. And because it's a linear factor, we're going to save ourselves a ton of time and just do synthetic division. And I'm going to do that into, again, into this piece over here because it has a non-zero constant. So, so go down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Cool. So I have a zero, right? And our factor theorem from before tells us that confirms x minus 1 is a factor. And then, so I know that x minus 1 is a factor. So x minus 1 factor. And then I need to factor the rest of this. My quotient is x squared minus 5x minus 24, which we know is going to factor into x minus 8, x plus 5. So my fully factored version, my final answer is x, right? We had to factor out an x originally, and then x minus 1, which we got by dividing, and then x minus 8 and x plus 5, which we got from factoring. So I want to list all of my factors just like that. So that's one example I have, one way I could work this. The next thing we want to talk about is multiplicity, right? I don't always have to have distinct factors. I can have repeated roots. So if any factor has what we call multiplicity k, it means that that factor appears k times in the factorization of the polynomial. Of the polynomial. The simplest example I can come up with is if I have like x squared plus 2x plus 1, right? That factors into x plus 1 squared. Well, it has two roots. It's going to have as many degree roots as it has degree, right? It's degree 2, it has two, two roots. The roots or the factors are x plus 1 that appears twice in the factorization of the polynomial. So multiplicity. Well, let's use multiplicity. I know that negative 1 is a 0 of the polynomial given with multiplicity 3. So negative 1 is a 0 with multiplicity 3. Express f of x as the product of linear factors. Well, if negative 1 is a 0 with multiplicity 3, that means I'm going to have x minus 1 cubed times some factor. So I could just FOIL out x minus 1 cubed. I could do long division, but that's cumbersome. It takes a lot of work. It's faster, I think, to just do synthetic division three times. to reduce this as far as I can and get it to a point where I can factor it by hand. So I'm just going to do this really quickly, or as quickly as I can while being accurate still. Uh, negative 2, negative 15. I might be already wrong. This should be positive 2. Yep, see, I'm already wrong. Positive 2, negative 11, positive 11, negative 6, positive 6, 0. All right, one time. Let's do it again. And when I do this, I'm going to ignore the zeros I get as remainders because we're done with that. We can just move on from that, right? Negative 3, negative 5, positive 5, negative 6, positive 6, 0. Third time, negative 3, whoa, negative 2, 1, uh, negative 1, negative 6, positive 6, 0. So we've shown that it works three times, and I'm left with this 2x squared plus x minus 6, which, of course, we can factor by grouping, factor by expansion, um, or expand this into plus 4x minus 3x. I'm just going to go through and do this really quick. I'm going to have a 2x minus 2. 
minus 3. And then I'm left with an x plus 2. So there is my full factorization, right? I've got it. I've got the factor with multiplicity. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. These should all be x plus 1, right? If x minus 1 is a 0, that means that x plus 1 is my factor. Whoops. I'm glad I caught that now. Um, so we see that that shows up three times, and then we see our factorization into linear factors of the rest of the polynomial.